Well, Brian, it's really great to have you on the Sports Editor. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Not a problem. Great to be here. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Brian, we're going to start off with your, your career in just a little bit. Um, you were the, the 1991 and 1996 SA Cricketer of the Year winner. What could you credit to, to your success? <laughs> well, firstly, performance, I suppose, is a logical <laughs> one. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you know, it could be a multitude of things. But, um, you know, obviously, uh, from from a young age, you you work, uh, you got aspirations, and you work towards certain goals and that type of thing. And um, I suppose the lucky break here yeah, too, and uh, you know, the performance through coming. So uh, yeah, just coming on the panel obviously takes a favour to you, and uh, they vote you in. So it's, yeah, I mean, you ask me what it is. It's really performance, and uh, I suppose those years are, are particularly good years, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Brian, being the all-rounder that, that you were, did you believe that your role was significant and something that, it, even in the modern game, can never be disregarded in the fact of being an all-rounder? Yeah, look, I mean, uh, people use the, the term all-rounder quite loosely nowadays. Uh, so, you know, all-rounder is someone who can get to the top six, or the, basically the top six, really, and hold the healthy position down. And uh, it can be one of the, 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 the top four bowlers or strike bowlers. Um, I, I would, uh, and, and vice versa, keeper who can hold his place as a keeper, and obviously in the top order better as well, top six or seven, you know. Um, you know, a lot of people look at bowlers who slog at an average in 20, and all of a sudden they're all rounder or better, mm. and a few overs, and all of a sudden they become all rounder. But a, a, a true all rounder is someone who can get to the top order and obviously um, uh, be one of the strike bowlers. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's not an easy task uh, to require of us. Um, it takes a lot of hard work, and uh, if you run around, uh, especially in this session, you find the batters just having a knock and things like that, and, uh, and sitting down and, and lazing around. The, the all rounds of blokes are bowling, batting, and you've ever been some field and afterwards as well. But it's, it's, it's a lot of hard work, eh? Huh? No, it's true. Well, it definitely does pay off, especially in your, your regard. And then. <laughs> Just in, in terms of reliability, you know, I don't think that's a word we could give you, being reliable. Was that something that you wanted to be known as in your career? Reliability? No, real, you're re- reliable. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, reliability, <laughs> I hate to be known. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, you know, it, it's all about personal performance, isn't it? So, yeah. so when you play sport, yeah. You know, you don't want to become a liability to use the term as the beef again. Um, <laughs> you want to become a bit reliable. So you know, you want to get runs and you get wickets, and if the cash comes in, way you want to catch it. Mm. Uh, the more often you do it, uh, the more reliable you become, and, and that's really what it's about. Um, uh, fortunately, unfortunately, um, I, I was quite often uh, myself and junkie, and uh, see, actually, it's a bat when we four wickets down and put spit, and we had to go really near uh, a batting situation and try to get 300, 350, or even 400. Um, and, and on green tops and bouncy wickets. So, yeah, I, I mean, it's nice to be known as reliable. Um, I think uh, my career, um, more often than not, that we, we went into salvage things and, and, and with the right batters with Richardson and things like that. So, like, my major World Cup, we almost got there as well. Um, but it's, it's nice to be known as reliable, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. And you touched a bit there on, on John T and you mentioned Dave Richardson as well. Um, and you had some great batting partners. Who did you really enjoy batting with? Was it John T or was it Dave? Both were fantastic. Uh, Dave, Dave uh, um, yeah, he was also a reluctant uh, single part of each other. Um, <laughs> but, uh, um, but John T to me was fantastic because um, such a quick bowler or spinners, you just knock it down there mm. and his next Exhausted, so you just had to make sure that you hit it far enough that you could get to the other side because Chanty was there anyway, so that's yeah. fantastic. Well, the big problem is when you start chasing fours and uh, season four runs, uh, that, that, that you had to turn quick and really get up to keep up with Chanty. <laughs> but Chanty uh, made a lot of run fights as bad, which was fantastic. Uh, and the, you know, the nasty man, he's so busy and enthusiastic, and he never turned you back, uh, which a lot of blokes do. Uh, I mean, it, it, when you get your body running and start going. 
you know, that, that you know, Joe, you know, Joe will never send you back. Yeah. Uh, no. As long as you got to the other end, Joe will always, you'd always make it to the other end. You know? yeah, that's brilliant. <laughs> and then we, we just touched a bit there on all rounders. Um, and you mentioned, yeah, that term has been thrown around a bit. Has that era in South Africa pretty much disappeared where we had proper all rounders? And obviously, Lux, if yourself, and you've got Jacques Harris and, and Sean Pollock, do we still have a chance of that, or has it totally gone out the window? Look, to be quite honest, I mean, uh, there, there are blokes around or all rounders. Um, there's no doubt about that. Um, I, I think uh, we, we, probably that we don't see it is because of the, the loss of all the creators that have left the country. Mm. Uh, yeah, I suppose Colpac, uh, you know, of course, Colpac anyway, the blokes are leaving the country. I think uh, the all rounders coming to the system, I've seen it at school uh, uh, and just watching a few things and chatting to people. It's just about the system uh, nurturing people uh, to and then to get into the top level. Um, I, I, I find uh, probably due to the political situation in the past and all that nonsense, um, I, I think a lot of people, uh, we, we, we lose a lot of people along the way and that, that's the problem. Um, mm. We need to try and maintain. Uh, call back, we need to find something in the system where we can actually block people, although that might become a uh, part of sell at the moment, but we, we need to hold people in the country and, 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 and play in our structures. As soon as you lose that, you're going to lose your turn of the all-rounders, of your spinners, of your footballers, and your batters, obviously. But all-rounders, it's, it's hard work, to be quite honest. Um, I think that's probably why you probably find a little bit uh, few, uh, a few that will run the run, but um, they are around, there's no doubt about it. That's good, because if you had a look at the, the current test series between England and South Africa, Ben Stokes' name has come up more than once. Um, and do you think that is the difference between the England setup and the South Africa setup at the moment? They've just got that, um, that draw card, that, that match winner, if I can call it that. Yeah, look, I mean, I mean, he hasn't done uh, as a top sort of performance. He performed very well in the series, although he just uh, quite nasty in the UK in the, the last series. Mm. Um, I, I think it's always, a, it's always a benefit having him coming in five or six on the catches and, and by the few overs. He hasn't won many overs on the trip anyway, yeah. taking a few catches. But um, I, I think he, he is a factor. There's no doubt about that. Um, I, I think, uh, to be quite honest, on, on paper with experience, and I've said it before, you had Broad, you had Anderson, um, uh, Stokes in the, in the wings, that type of thing. Um, you know, Jeffrey Archer, I, I think their bowling is a lot stronger than ours. Mm. It's as simple as that. That's why I, I thought they were a lot better. Yeah. Um, on, on the batting front, you had Joe Root, who you got some runs. Our batters just haven't got big runs. I mean, you got the cock coming at, at six or so, whatever he's batting. And, um, you know, probably, probably far too low as far as I'm concerned. Um, in the old days, you believe your best batter and batter three. Yeah. Um, whether that's right for him or not, uh, I know he's open the batting in the past, so technically he's up there. Um, but he's definitely got to get up the order. I just, I just think, uh, the makeup of the side and moving people in and out of And I know it's new for Bouch and the boys, but they're, they're, they're trying to really, uh, uh, bad situation, trying to get the boys to play, uh, and then compete. Uh, we did in the first test, and uh, I think uh, the British side on paper is quite honest. They are better side than South Africa. Mm. I beat around the foot, and I think the boys have played pretty well. Um, I think technically he's a serious problem, and that, 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 that's been coming on a long time now with the advent of the uh, white ball cricket, as they call it. And um, I think um, the old days, the, the old uh, analogy of, of uh, playing for horse time with this cricket, make sure the blacks bowl at you. Uh, 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 I don't think the blacks have been implementing it. It's as simple as that. You can't, cannot stand on next time the ball seen or bouncing and, and, and trying to play it off some because you mm. play it off the bat. Simple angle kills you know, from, the, from, from cricket. And I don't think we've adhered to the basics and I think uh, bad habits have crept in from, from white ball cricket. That, that's a very interesting point that you make there, Brian, because yeah, it, it is definitely something I wanted to bring up as well. Because if, if you look at it, there's a fantastic coaching setup at the moment. Uh, you know, Graham Smith, obviously, he, his reputation goes before him. Um, so surely it is going to come right. But do you think that they got one eye looking ahead and trying to get over this series, or are they going to go back to the drawing board and try and fix everything, or are they just trying to get through the series as quick as they can? Look, it's, it's taken us 20 years to get to where we are now. It's going to yeah. take a long time to come right. It's not going to happen overnight. I think. I think um, about with the World Cup coming up in four years' time, I think he's high would be on that. And I'm certainly hoping that coaching structure stays in place. 
Um, um, I, I think uh, I think we'll be looking at the other side of the performances there. Uh, I'd be very surprised if they don't. Yeah. And um, you know, the stuff, um, uh, the rules that he might be taking, cold packing, stuff like that. Um, and uh, yeah, so there's, there's definitely boost to be filled, there's no doubt about it. Fiorentina's uh, going to be cold packed as well, so we're losing two of our most experienced players. But you, you know what? Um, you know, you, you lose one, you'll get another one in. It's as simple as that. It's just opportunities for other people. And look here, it's definitely taking that. Mm. Um, but in front, uh, I, I think just, uh, some of the older players that's an addition, and uh, maybe even a, a young Baguma to So listen, you know, averaging 31, or whatever the case, is not good enough anymore. They must put their hands up. You want to play in the national side, you must actually stop performing now. Absolutely. Being, uh, tempted, as, as I call it. And then they take responsibility and get run. It's as simple as that. Are they good enough? Uh, I don't know. If you can get 180 in the first start game, there's no doubt that you can play cricket. Yeah. And and now it's going to perform. And Rusty, I do. And, and I like that in Mali. Uh, you speak to what people might say in the media. But um, uh, I think both of them can play cricket. And they they just got to put their hands up and say, right, uh, and take responsibility. It cannot be Kirsch Rell that uh, the Chris playing chest on French cricket type thing. Mm. You've got to have a solid technique and you've got to sort it out. It's as simple as that. Yeah. And uh, the players must take responsibility. That's true, yeah. That's, it's good to hear that, yeah, because it, it's always easy to point the finger, but often you just need to look at yourself and see how you can get better. But you, Thank you, that. Yeah. yeah. You touched on white ball cricket, and this is an interesting thing because I, I even see it in South Africa. Is T20 cricket putting unnecessary strain on Test cricket? Well, I mean, this is beat around the bush. Uh, the bush. Um, let's look at commercially. Yeah. Uh, white ball cricket, which is your 50 over and your, and, and your 2020, is really the, the way the world is going. To attract crowds and they don't really bring the money. And that's for the players yeah. are earning the money as well. Um, I heard uh, Chris Stokes was earning £1.8 million <laughs> uh, for four months playing white ball cricket, really, if you want to call it that. Yeah. Um, that's a phenomenal amount of money, and uh, that's what's coming again. That, that's what Ted Trigger's up against. Yeah. So uh, they got to, they got to do something contractually trying to hold the people and play more Ted Trigger. Um, uh, you know, Ashes to me is a, is a fantastic uh, series, mm. and uh, perhaps uh, we as South Africans should be playing the five test match series against England and Australia, yes. and maybe even India, yes. and uh, and try create something like that because that really is the heart of cricket. Yeah, the test cricket is really what cricket all about. The other stuff is raising the cares and crowds and a couple of hot dogs and beers. You know, that's really what it's about. But test cricket is really the heart and soul of the game, and uh, we have to keep it going. Um, and uh, and and obviously improve our first class cricket as well. Um, we, we you know the blokes must be able to play the longer form of the game because that, that gives you the basic to play this other race of test cricket as well. Hmm. Uh, you talk about first class cricket, and I think that there's also a bit of things up in the air with our domestic league. And do you think it's it's healthy, Brian, right now? Our, our domestic cricket, our four day franchise, is it is it doing okay? I think I think our, our cricket has deteriorated over the period of time, um, and uh, uh, people say I'm speaking from the arm key, the old parts and all that nonsense. But uh, I just looked at the quality of players, technically, and all that nonsense. Um, I think uh, I think it's definitely definitely weakened for whatever mm. reason. Um, possibly because club cricket wickets. Um, mm. uh, possibly I, I don't know what the coaching structure is like at club level. I'm not, I don't know what the coaching structure is in, in first class. Um, but we need to have, a, uh, to me, there should be a strong uh, FAA side and a yes. system by national side. We have, I don't think we got that, personally. I like the idea of under-19 World Cup or under-19 film is fantastic. I think it's more of that competition against these global people would be fantastic. But we have to get a club level up, uh, otherwise we're wasting time. And then you can get up, you've got decent weekend facilities and decent coaches and that type And you've got to attract school boys. So if you can't do that, I think you're an hardy traffic. No, quite correct. Quite correct, Brian. Two more questions. Um, in your mind, who's currently the best all-rounder in the world? Currently? Yeah. Oh, look, it's got to be Stokes. There's no doubt about that. Mm. Um, you know, he's good performing. He averages, uh, what, uh, 30, uh, 36 or 35 or whatever the case is. And he bowled, you know, he bowled at 32. So he, he must be the all, best all-rounder. Um, he's probably going to get knighted by the Queen anyway. Yes. Uh, yeah, he's, he's got to be up there. Um, yeah, it's exciting. I'm happy to see players like that. 
Um, and it would be nice to get a few of those boys in, in our national side, uh, which would be quite quite lucky. Definitely. Um, if you can get to you can even make, try and get a couple of yards on him. It could be fantastic because I think he can also lighten up the, uh, you know, the, 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 the cricket fraternity as well. Mm. But once again, we need to find these blokes, we need to keep them. And um, with Pretorius, the bowls are very nice line and with height, and he looks like a good batter. Um, hasn't performed actually at all the levels that we need him to. Uh, somebody should be working into to increase the speed. Uh, by, uh, you know, to me, a bowler should be bowling around about a 140 test match cricket, really. I mean, you cannot, you cannot upgrade the 132s and 130s on that kind of thing. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. You've got to have four bowlers bowling 140 plus. No, that's quite correct. Final question Mark Boucher, he's got it in him to take South Africa forward. Would you agree? I think he's got everything in his tax. He's a tough competitor, he's a top sportsman. The likable fella. Um, I just think that, that he might need someone to help him oversee him, a, 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 a strong manager of some sort mm. uh, uh, from the organisation, uh, organisational side, and take some pressure of him so he can concentrate on the game. I think he's got the best trigger there as a consultant, Dark Callis. You can you cannot ask for more. You can't, cannot get better. Mm. If the players don't listen to him, then they're idiots, and uh, then they don't uh, deserve to be in the side. Um, he's got his runs because his technique was sorted out. He knows angles, he knows everything else. So they, they've got him in there. Your grand stuff is you to the, uh, your, um, the, what do you call him, Cabrina now? I suppose not Cabrina, but uh, director. Uh, uh, director of cricket. Yeah. Um, and he's got a very good, strong money. But I, but I still think there should be a, a manager, mm. a strong manager uh, uh, about Darcy. So Darcy concentrates the cricket, but some to handle all other crap. You know? First class. Brian, been absolutely brilliant to get your, your opinion and talk about cricket. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Tom. All the best, Brian. Thanks, man. Cheers, Brian. Cheers, cheers. Bye-bye.